Pierce for Princeton, Fleming for St. Joe's. Let's have a Sunday, folks. This is the best game on the slate today. No offense, Miami and Colorado. It's here on City Avenue. And Hawks control the opening tap. Reynolds quickly with the curl and spins it in. And the start they were looking for. Attacking a little handoff into a ball screen and he beats Alaka, who's Princeton's best defender. Tigers off of an 81-70 win over Drexel the other night in their home gym, Jadwin Gymnasium. Lee, the man who just had the ball, had 23 in that one. Alaco off the bounce. Good hedge there for Fleming. Shot clock down to five. Lee steps into it. Might have got hit on the arm. Rattles it in. Boy, the two players we talked about in our opening, they got off to a quick start. Lee with the deep three. Reynolds with the drive. High-level guard play against good defenders. It's always good to be made to look smart, right, Doc? Brown with a kick out. Reynolds. And one and done goes St. Joe's. That's what Pierce does. Cleans up the glass at both ends of the floor. Yeah, Pierce number 10 in rebounding in America. Nice find, Alaco. They reverse it. Peters, who's been struggling, but not today. Princeton's been waiting for Peters to break out. He shot 40% on threes last year. He's their sniper, but only in the mid-20s this year. That's welcome. Sign for Tiger fans. Gee, he came in one for his last 21. Mitch Henderson said he's not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. Have to trust your leaders. Love guards who can post. And Greer's one of them. Good D by Alaco, who's one of the best. And soft turnaround. Well defended by Alaco. Forced Greer into a turnaround, took away his power move, and that's that's not an easy shot to make. That's a pro shot. And we'll see Alaco posted up a lot today, too. Some physical guards in this game. Little underclass matchup here. Finkley guarded Caden Pierce. Tend to shoot for the Tigers, who opened up with a neutral site win against Rutgers to begin their season. Alaco spins that one off. Martini hitting the offensive glass. Shot clock back to 20. Peters and back of the iron. Cam Brown just got away with a foul there. Pushed Xavier Lee. Lee slips it up on one foot. Tough shot. Got the roll. He, he makes ridiculously tough shots. One foot fade away. Slices into tiny gaps. What did I hear you say the other day about former Princeton coach that the late Pete Carrill? used to make them take uncomfortable shots, right? Yeah, I, I saw Chris Mooney's Richmond team, and there's another tough shot, practicing awkward layups, non-fundamental. I said, why are you practicing those crazy shots? And Coach Mooney said, Coach Carrill taught me, you got to practice off-balance shots. Peters steps up, and off target. There's Pierce, though, in between two St. Joe's Hawks. Lee, second chance, and that's a dud. But Martini hits the offensive glass. And it's the long rebounds that are hurting the Hawks. Alaco can't give it to him, knocks it down. Yeah, you, you can't give a team like Princeton three shots. But in the Hawks' defense, sometimes those long rebounds, you box out, the ball just goes over your head and, or into odd areas. Just like St. Joe's, as Reynolds gets fouled here, Princeton will, relies quite a bit on threes. 36% of their points come from the, the outside this year. And a lot of them are off second shots, inside out. That's Princeton basketball. The ball doesn't move. Move the ball faster than the defense can move their feet. Great ball reversal. And you got to adjust a little bit on a situation like that. St. Joe's going to have to close out a little bit harder, a little bit sooner. Catch and curl for Cam Brown. In and out. Made one of those the other night. Greer hitting the offensive glass. Quachik got the tap off the bench. Rebounding's an emphasis for both coaches for obvious reasons. But St. Joe's, they saw that Drexel tape where Drexel dominated the, the, the Tigers in terms of getting 19 offensive rebounds in that game. They'd love to get those extra shots themselves. Cam Brown jumps the passing lane. And turnover for Princeton. Tigers first of the afternoon, pick and roll with Simmons. Hop into the lane, one more pass, contact, and a foul on Princeton. Nice pick and roll action. And the defense was there, but the contact was not straight on. 
They charge that to Caden Pierce, so he's out of this game already. And, and, and that is of huge magnitude. Second personal. Pierce, again, one of the best rebounders in the country, and the Princeton offense flows through him. He's like a point center in this system. That's a maybe the not necessarily the most talented player. He's up there, but he might be the most important player for the Titans. Greer separating, just pushing Jack Scott right off. And able to get the bucket. Love Greer's physicality. Two buckets now in the point in the paint for the physical guard Greer. Now he's got the difficult task of guarding Lee one on one. Scott wearing number five, son of the former Princeton head coach Joe Scott. This is him with the ball right now. Got fouled on the floor. Back and forth here on last, and it's showing off. And Princeton might have a couple more if the Ivy League actually allowed graduate students to play basketball. But they don't. Keyshawn Kelman is at Florida Gulf Coast from last year's team. Ryan Langborg at Northwestern. And, of course, Ivy League MVP Tosan Iwoma now in the G League in the Pistons organization. 3-2 zone and nice changeup after a timeout. Lee with three on the shot clock. Hops. Scott got it off and hits it. Precision execution. And Princeton up six. Both these teams have five out offenses, very versatile forwards. Everyone on the floor can make a three. And we get a stoppage at this end, says Brent Hampton. This is just drive and kick. Wait, look at it. Lee actually does a little bit of a no look before throwing a one handed, almost hook pass to the opposite side. Again, he has game. He is not always fundamentally sound, but he gets fundamental efficient results. Nine made threes coming in per game for Princeton. They already have four. Xavier Brown in for St. Joe's, wearing number 11, the Roman Catholic product. Kwachik. And got to the lane with the physicality, but ball tied up, arrow to the Tigers. And first St. Joe's turnover. And Matt, we were talking about it. St. Joe's, number one in the country for points produced from the three-point arc. Princeton's 57, but that means that they're ahead of about 300 other schools. <laughs> yeah. So both of these teams, everyone on the court can make a shot, and that's not common in college basketball. It's so hard to defend. Look at this offense, five people outside. That way, if you do help at the rim, you often pay by giving up a three. Tigers doing this with one of their top scorers in Caden Pierce on the bench with two personals. Hawks have yet to hit a three. They're 0 for 3 from the perimeter. Lee straightens up. Once another. And Martini just missed the offensive rebound. Here come the Hawks. Xavier Brown at the controls. Reynolds thinks about the three. Rear double teamed. Wow, tough catch. Simmons in traffic too deep under the basket. And that's a freshman field goal attempt. Yeah, don't shoot if you're not comfortable. Simple rule. Peters gets it back and drills it. Six now for the Evanston, Illinois product, Blake Peters. Yeah, St. Joe's is going to have to close out harder. These threes are comfortable for Princeton. Just because you have a hand in the face doesn't mean these outstanding shooters aren't still comfortable. Kwachik finds Greer. This time the drop off. Simmons got stripped out of bounds. It stays at this end. Just quick ball reversal. And you see the hand in the face. That was a contested shot. But when you play high-level shooters, they're used to being contested. So you have to get there a little bit sooner, hopefully make them put it on the floor, or make them uncomfortable enough to turn down the shot. But a hand in the face won't necessarily stop the level of shooters that Princeton has. You almost have to do that, though, with Peters as Reynolds curls and misses here because he's more of a catch-and-shoot guy. He can't put it on the floor as well. Well, that, that's a good point, a part of most scouting reports. But when you have to help on drives, you follow your principles, sometimes you, you leave shooters open for half a second because you do want to be in gaps. You do want to protect the rim, and that gives a guy like Peters just enough time. That's why on those closeouts, sometimes you don't close out but sell out. Have some body control, fly by them, make them shot fake or put it on the floor if it's that high a level of a shooter which princeton has those guys scott and princeton give it right back good closeout so far for the tigers 0 for 4 so far from the perimeter for billy lang st joe's hawks 
Plachik caught up, six to shoot. Cam Brown, does he have to be the bailout? No, it's Reynolds. Steps through the double team, double clutch and hits. That's about as tough a two-point shot as you could see. A double clutch 15-footer with a hand in the face. Four now for Reynolds, has 40% of the points for St. Joe's. Brown guards Lee. He and Peters have combined for 11 of the 17. Jump of the passing lane, Cam Brown, good save, but right to Scott. Shot clock not reset, obviously, on the change of possession. And there, there, I don't think there was enough to really establish here. Well, in this play, you're going to see very good defense in the gap, forcing Reynolds to change his shooting motion at the end of the shot clock, but Reynolds talented enough to make tough shots. Pat Driscoll, Brian O'Connell, Brent Hampton, all of this crew this afternoon. Brent Hampton actually stepped on Billy Lang's toe, uh, what was... <laughs> About a week and a half ago at the Villanova game, Billy Lang pointed it out to him. I said, yeah, you just stepped on my toe. Brent Hampton casually said, nah, you'll be all right. Yeah, I'm sure he will be. That's funny, though. You can't make some, some of those things up. And I'm guessing this is that, so... All right, so that's in. So it's interesting. Based on their interpretation, saving the ball is defined as control yep. because you were able to alter the movement of it. I always thought you had to actually possess the ball, but so, I guess saving it qualifies. So you always learn something. It gets ruled, as Pat Driscoll just told us, is a live ball turnover. Jacob Huggins, newly into the game, travels here on the baseline. So I really like the zone against Princeton, which sounds counterintuitive because of how well Princeton shoots. But think about it. When you play zone, you're not going to get as much drive and kicking. You take away post-up games. You take away their backdoor cuts. You take away pick and rolls. So they become a little more one-dimensional as a three-point shooting team. And you can extend. So I like the zone changeup by Coach Lang. Trips on the right were screening and room to drive on the left in this set. See if the adjustment works on the, the Tigers' next trip down. Fleming off the pick and roll, drops it in the cup. Terrific pass, but I love the body control by Fleming. Princeton had rim protection, and Fleming just avoids contact and finishes softly. Here comes the first member of the St. Joe's front court to score today. Martini at this end, bombs away. Martini's a stretch center, the biggest player on the floor, and he'll defend the center position, but he's really a three-point shooter. Almost all his shots from three. 16th three of the year for a 38% shooter. Brown, better pass. Reynolds steps in and rattles home. There's their first triple, and who else to answer the bell? The guy who steps up biggest when the lights are yeah. brightest. Re regression to mean Reynolds is going to make 40-plus percent of his threes. Coach Lang knows it. Reynolds knows it. Keeps taking those shots. Seven now for St. Joe's leader and the preseason first-team All-Atlantic 10 selection. Dalen Davis setting up Scott. Two to shoot. Tough turnaround. Got it. Wow. That was a really hard shot. Well defended by Kwachek. Tip your hat to Scott on that. Five off the bench for Jack Scott. Xavier Brown, deep, good find. Cameron Brown, Brown to Brown connection. The unusual quickness of Brown gets easy baskets for people. He just beats two defenders on that play and finds an open teammate pretty easily. Great playmaking ability. First assist of the afternoon for the fantastic freshman. John Chaney said, a penetrating guards better than any play in anyone's playbook. That five on four, five on three, you can't beat that. Yeah, and God rest his soul, he had just a few of them. Two to shoot, Alaco forced into the air ball by Cam Brown. And steps into the three here. Peters runs down the rebound for Princeton. High-level basketball, Tigers at almost 62% from the field, St. Joe's at 53. Martini tried the curl, Rashir Fleming swatted it away. Turnover for Princeton, the Tigers fourth. Big-time defense by Fleming. He got back screened and got over it. And Brown draws the foul on fellow freshman Davis. Well, 
Eagles trailing warm by five. Great warm up for the Eagles Cowboys, that's for sure. Yep. Yeah, no complaints there. Xavier Brown, Cam Brown, Lynn Greer, Rashir Fleming. And Anthony Finkley for St. Joe's as Greer right to the cup around the lane. Greer showing, he showed strength earlier. There's his quickness, and he went opposite the screen. Rejecting screens, going opposite, usually takes the defense by surprise, and the help isn't there because they're loaded on the other side. And what do you know? We're in a possession game. Pierce back in with the two personals. Errant pass to Martini, shot clock inside 10. Good D for St. Joe's. Alonco, he'll have to bail it out. Brown up at his grill. Lee, they won't get a shot off. Best defensive possession of the day for either side. And the reason why is the versatility of Fleming. Fleming switched several times in that possession, and Princeton never had a mismatch out of it. I used to tell our players, when you go up against like Fleming, he's 6'9", you think you have a mismatch, but it's really not a mismatch because Fleming can lock down guards as well as forwards. Yeah, you saw it right there. Fifth Princeton turnover as a result. Greer sees Xavier Brown in the corner. Tough catch. Finkley curled. Thought about a three. Has hit a few, but not great by percentage. Brown, extension to the basket. That is just a one-on-one -on -one battle. And so much of sport comes down to a one-on-one -on -one battle. And that time, Brown just wins it with his quickness with a blow-by. Direct line drive. Early candidate for Atlantic 10 freshman of the year. Xavier Brown with his first bucket foul at this end. It's either Xavier Brown or Finkley. This is called go-go gadget freshman, John Janini. Yeah, terrific quickness. And this is, Alaco is Princeton's best defender. And I guess no one told Brown that because he goes right by like a blur. Well, I know you're familiar with this mental toughness. It wouldn't matter who it was. No. Great confidence. Greer deflects it in the backcourt. Brown. And that would have brought the house down. That would have been a momentum three. But St. Joe's defensive package, they press out of bounds under this year. It's like a reverse press, pressing under your own basket instead of the other teams. St. Joe's, by the way, hasn't led since it was 2-0. Peters steps in, back of the iron. Greer directs the rebound. Brown, right to the basket, couldn't finish. Well defended by Martini. The forwards in this game are super versatile defensively and offensively. Good bounce, Alaco make it. Scott got caught up, kick out. And Peters wanted a foul call. Think we might have hit him on the arm. Instead, Xavier Brown the rebound. And Brown stepped on the sideline. That's Cam Brown. Rare turnover for St. Joe's. Just the Hawks second. But what a basketball game. Princeton by one. Happy holidays, everybody. Game. They're starting to get penetration, points in the paint, as well as cause turnovers from Princeton, which normally doesn't happen. Zone again to thwart whatever Coach Henderson drew up in the timeout. Yeah, to your point, Princeton only two points in the paint compared to 14 for the Hawks. And there are a couple post-ups, one by Greer, but it's really penetration-based. So the quickness of St. Joe's starting to turn over the Tigers as well as getting the ball to the rim. Jack Scott sits down for Princeton. Matt Alonco, speaking of mental toughness, about as fearless as anybody in college basketball, he has the ball now. Coach Henderson says you can't ask for a better leader. Peters steps in, wanted a third triple. And Reynolds had the hand on the rebound. Instead, shot clock back to 20 for Princeton. The zone's getting misses for St. Joe's. Now they got to finish with the defensive rebound. It's harder sometimes in the zone because you don't have an assigned box out. Pierce out of the bottom of that 3-2. They reverse it. Martini and left it short. Fleming with the rebound. Zone helping St. Joe's. Again, ironic that the zone helps against the shooting team, but it makes them more one-dimensional. Reynolds over the shoulder. Brown sheds Lee, and St. Joe's has the first lead for the Hawks since the, what was 10 seconds into the basketball game. Brown shooting around 40% again this year, and you talk about leadership and dependability, that's Brown for St. Joe's. Cam Brown. Five now for the graduate student. Xavier Lee trying to match. Finkley the rebound after Princeton goes one and done.
Greer, great flash, Fleming off the board, got fouled. A couple things there. First, Princeton likes to double team the post, but when you double team, someone's open, and Fleming wisely cuts to the open spot. And here we see a good closeout. That's a sellout. You make Brown uncomfortable, make him pump fake, but Brown's so skilled, so veteran, so dependable for the Hawks through the years with defense, good assist to turnover ratio, good shooting percentage. Cam Brown just does winning things. First trip to the foul line for either of these two teams. And Pat Driscoll. Just a friendly warning there to Finkley and Xavier Lee. Sometimes the game just comes down to shooting. Princeton made threes early, and they're missing a lot of those same shots right now. And we got a foul on Lee. Pushing off on Finkley. That's two That's two on Xavier Lee. Uh, it, it looks like maybe a lane violation. Oh, no, lane violation. Instead. Excuse yeah, yeah, me. I'm sorry. Early. He, he did wishful, hold, he, he did hold think, up one wishful finger. Wishful thinking from the Hawks broadcaster yeah. there. He still ended just, up pretty good on just the Just a violation. Zone again. And the three people on top really covers the three-point arc very, very well in this zone. The openings are below the free throw line. Lee posting and foul on Cam Brown. Billy, La Billy Lang says no. to Pat Driscoll, no big deal. It's okay. Now remember, St. Joe's caused a turnover last time in this situation. And yeah, Princeton uncharacteristically with six of them here in the first half. The tough thing on the 3-2, and there's the zone and the anticipation by Greer and taking the short two, the easy layup. The zones change things as we thought it might. St. Joe's cushion growing. It's at five. Greer with eight in the first half to go with three rebounds and a couple steals. St. Joe's has such good team quickness. They can cover ground in this zone, especially the bottom. Those two guys got to go corner to corner, but Brown and Finkley can do it. Lee steps in and hits. Not, not an easy shot. Eight now for Xavier Lee. And timeout for the top. Ken Palm has them projected to go undefeated. Now, I don't think anyone in college basketball could do that, but it shows how highly regarded this Princeton team is. Yeah, Ken Pomeroy has him at 27-0, and we get contact, offensive foul here on Reynolds. Martini taking the charge, which is actually his forte, along with being a three-point sniper. The mistake there is not playing off two feet. When you jump stop, play off two feet, you avoid charges, and Martini, a wily vet, gets in front of the guard, who he feels might not be able to stop and draws the charge. First personal on Reynolds, fourth team foul on St. Joe's. Only real foul trouble is two on Caden Pierce. But Mitch Henderson uh, confident in leaving his guys out there. There's a, a metric called two foul participation. Princeton inside the top 100 in terms of trusting their players with two fouls. That's a great point, Matt. And that's an analytics thing. The fact is most players do not foul out. So when you sit your first, your, one of your best players in the first half, you may be being overly cautious as a coach. And Coach Henderson, as you said, trusting one of his best players in Pierce. Festive St. Joe's student section applauding the effort for Lynn Greer to get that floor all cleaned up. Does a little bit of everything. Nothing too small or nothing too big. I love that. And as predicted, St. Joe's back to man-to-man. -to -man. Giving this Tiger offense some different looks. There's the back door from Lee. Good find. Alaco settles for the mid range. Is short. And that's what you want to do against shooters. Make them put it on the floor for a less efficient shot. Well done by St. Joe's. Reynolds rise and short himself. Alaco the other way. Chance for Princeton to get the lead back. Martini wants it and spun it off. Offensive rebound. Pierce. He can't convert. Martini can.
The two big guys for Princeton literally playing volleyball that time across the rim. Fleming did a great job contesting Martini's original shot, but you got to finish with defensive rebounds. Pierce, one of the best rebounders in America. First tie of the afternoon, Hawks inside out. Greer with the hop to the lane, Lee, and that's the second personal foul. Cam, Cam Brown, big shot from the corner. Hawks playing well, but Princeton counters Xavier Lee. We got a tight one right now. We gotta get ready for our family migration. Yeah. After Princeton, Xavier Lee picked up what was his second personal right before the break. And St. Joe's not doing itself any favors at the free throw line. Hawks came in 71% as the team. They're one for three to start today. And you know it's going to be a close game. And if it comes down to free throws, watch out because Princeton's number five in the country, basically 80%. Great shot there by our camera crew to tell you exactly how full this building is today. It was a late arriving crowd for the one o'clock tip. You know, Christmas parties, G. Holiday season, one for two for Greer. You don't want to miss much of this one, though, because every play is going to matter in this game. Alaco. Good help by Cam Brown, tied it up. And arrow to St. Joe's. You called it Mr. Dependable, Cam Brown. Sees Alaco posting up, and Alaco is a terrific post-up guard. Shoots like a big man percentage, and Brown to the rescue for his teammate Xavier Brown helping each other out. Yeah, and I mean, that's one of those where Alaco's good enough to probably score there on the freshman Brown. Oh, he's definitely good enough. Nice kick out, Kwachik in and out. Xavier Brown got a deflection on that basketball. That's last touch by St. Joe's. And Cam Brown disagrees. Well, let's see. Crashing the boards, scrum. Uh oh, uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, very much so. Blake Peters off the fingertips out of bounds. You know, getting that city of brotherly love holiday spirit. It should be a little partisan in this arena today. And there's a decent Tiger contingent. Alaco and Lee inside 10 to shoot. Good ball reversal. Alaco, top of the key. And now one for four from the perimeter for the Tigers leader. But I do think that closeout forced him to shoot that a little bit more quickly. And the pick and roll, fantastic. And the reason why that was open, you have Reynolds in the weak side corner. And Xavier Lee did not want to leave. Reynolds that open, hence no rim protection. That's putting your players in position to succeed. First put bucket off the bench. Put your good shooter in a place where you force his man to help or not help. Someone will be open. Sorry, G. First bucket off the bench there for Kwachik. Four bench points for St. Joe's. Scott got the up fake and got right to the basket. Speaking of bench points, seven now off the bench for Jack Scott. And speaking of no rim protection. Seesawing back and forth. Still St. Joe's by one. Reynolds steps into the triple. And deep rebound corralled by Alaco. Vocal and emotional leader for them. His teammates call him Mush, short for Mush Mouth. Because he never stops talking. Lee never stops cutting. Layup good. It's the first backdoor basket by Princeton. And they cut relentlessly. If they don't get it, they're going to keep cutting till they do. You have to expect it. Not change your defense, but be ready to react to it. Second lead change. Xavier Brown changes it back. Lee shooting the ball. I, I'm sorry. Brown shooting the ball. Outstanding this year. No one more as a driver, but showing his shooting skills. In high school, he was the playmaker, so he didn't show that shot. But the coaches at St. Joe's always knew he had it. Came in fifth in the Atlantic 10 at 50% from the arc. His first one of the day. Lee, and yep, didn't trip on his own, unfortunately. St. 
Yeah, Lee, lane open, classic Princeton basketball cutting, and there's the skip pass. So who's open? It's usually the person on the opposite side of the court. You, you help at the rim with the person least dangerous, furthest away. So that's why that skip pass gets it to open people. Nice design to Lee. Peters got it blocked by Fleming. That's a special defensive play. There's only a handful of players in America that can block a shot in the corner coming from the opposite side. Unbelievable ability to cover ground and length. Came in as St. Joe's block shots leader. Boy, Fleming steamrolling towards an all A-10 defensive team honor. Yep. One and a half of those a game for him. Lee long on the three. It's the switch ability as well. He does so many things defensively. Got a one second to change differential shot and game clock here to finish up the first half. Want to get the last shot. Don't let Princeton get the ball back. One tie, four lead changes. It's brought us to this point. St. Joe's up two. Zone so now. Close out this first half. Reynolds, Xavier Brown steps in. Was looking like another. And that gets batted to Greer. Three seconds. Greer to the basket. And what a counted. Princeton will start with the basketball. It's Blake Peters, Matt Alaco, Zach Martini, Xavion Lee, and Caden Pierce. Anthony Finkley, Rashir Fleming, Cam Brown, Lynn Greer, Eric Reynolds for St. Joe's. It's a Pierce. great matchup. Yeah, he missed most of the first half with those two personals. Got Peters, anticipation. Fleming almost jumped that. Instead, Pierce with three to shoot right into the three. Tough shot by the power forward, Pierce. And Finkley's defense was so impressive on that possession because Pierce wanted to post him, but really couldn't. And they had to make a tough shot at the end of the clock. And that's Caden Pierce's first field goal. Finkley draws in the double. Round the horn. Greer with 10 to shoot. Cam Brown steps in. And Finkley bats that rebound to himself. Stayed with the play, but off balance. Such a great effort. Just don't shoot if you're not comfortable. Peters and Pierce, good hard hedge there for Finkley. Up to what's a tie and five lead changes. Peters drills that. And, and that's a big time screen. It's a tricky Princeton action. It looks like a screen away by Peters, and it ends up being a fade screen at the last second. That's the third three now for Blake Peters. Greer trying to shake him off, steps out of it. Cam Brown steps in and drills that. St. Joe's back to within one. Thanks three. to the second triple for the grad student. Three-point barrages, both ends, so many skilled shooters. Martini with the flash, shot clock inside 20 for the Tigers. Reynolds with a good close there on Peters. Well, Finkley's defense for a freshman is really exemplary. When I saw him hold his own against Eric Dixon, I know they, I knew they had something pretty quick with Finkley. Yeah, their their whole front court was good that night. Lee, pretty good in the Princeton backcourt. I, I mean, a step back three over a six nine player. That's just insane. A great individual play with great individual skill by Lee. Thirteen wow. now for Xavier Lee. Career navigating the baseline foul on Princeton. Right here, you're going to see a tricky, there's a drive and kick, end of the clock for Pierce, and there's the tricky screen. It looks like Peters is going to set the screen, then he receives it at the last second. Now, this one's really tough. Are you kidding me? Over 6'9", stepping back. Boy, you just tip your hat on that one. Game high 13 for Xavier Lee. Greer left that short. Finkley again. Alter in that rebound, but out of bounds, he touched it last. St. Joe's by as many as five, Princeton as many as nine. Tigers by four now. Princeton not scoring inside, very few twos, and when they've made a run, it's been completely reliant on threes. Lee, as you say, it changes it. And another tough one. I mean, they, so the great ones, and Reynolds does it, and Lee's doing it. They not only make the good shots, they make the tough ones. And to make runners over defensive help, really tough. As tough as that step back he made. Five second half points now for Lee. Reynolds falling away, was backing up like that was going in. It almost went down. Alaco through traffic. 
With the kick out, it's Peters. Got Greer up in the air. And Fleming bumped into. That's three on Caden Pierce. Big factor in the game. Remember, Princeton led early, and Pierce was in the game. Pierce does a lot of things in terms of screening and defense that don't always show up in the stat sheet, but show up on the scoreboard. So that's really significant. And here comes Jack Scott right at the horn on cue. Now, Jack Scott, though, had a terrific first half. Three for three from the field, seven points. Sophomore, very versatile at 6'5", can play the point. And we'll see if Scott can stem the tide based on Pierce's foul trouble. You miss so much, though, with him in terms of steals, block shots, his passing. Aiden Pierce does a lot. Brown spins that off. Rebound caroms to Xavier Brown. Still trying for the tap. And Hawks couldn't get it to go. And there's a foul in frustration. Yeah, that... that might be the easiest shot of the game and just a missed layup great effort on the glass well good news Rashir Fleming only his first no real foul trouble on the St. Joe's side for Princeton you have Lee with two Pierce with three well you lose rebounding a lot of rebounding with Pierce not in the game but Scott better three-point shooter yeah you're right and Lee just travels here Eighth Princeton turnover, second one for Lee. Lee's had so much success driving. I think he thought he's capable of doing anything, but you can't do it with the extra steps. Well, unless you play in the three-letter league. Yeah. Four he, minutes into the second half. He might do that someday, along yeah. with Reynolds and maybe a couple others. Reynolds, quick first step to the basket. Nine now for him. So it's really simple. It's St. Joe's points in the paint off penetration or Princeton's three-point shooting. Who's going to end up with the higher total? Good rotation here by Kwachik. Princeton shot clock inside 15. Good D by Reynolds. Wow. And Cam Brown, hand in the passing lane, got the deflection. Xavier Brown off the bounce. That's a third on Xavier Lee. What's now three personals. Caden Pierce, though, they trade three fouls for three fouls. 1-3-1, one, one, and Pierce is a menace at the top of the 1-3-1. One, one. You see how high they have to lob the ball over Pierce. Look at the flash. Kwachik missed it the first time, second time, third time. St. Joe's to within two. Kwachik's persistence makes the third time the charm. Of course, I'm sure he'd like to make the layup the first time, but nonetheless, the persistent pays off. Four now off the bench for the native of Horzal, Poland. Dalen Davis back in for Princeton, wearing number 22 out there with Alaco and Pierce, Peters and Martini. Alaco blocked by Fleming. That's off Alaco and out of bounds to St. Joe's. St. Joe's has done a terrific job protecting the paint. There really isn't much opportunity for Princeton outside of the three-point arc. Second block of the afternoon, by the way, for Rashir Fleming. He came in with about one and a half a game. Good enough for top ten of the conference. Reynolds right to the basket, score the layup, plus one. Design isolation, trips formation on the right-hand side. Reynolds alone in the left corner. They throw it to him and give him plenty of space. Watch all the space Reynolds has on this. The whole side to himself, and he uses his explosive quickness. And St. Joe, it's really St. Joe's quickness at this point against Princeton's three-point shooting. And lead is back toward the Hawks' side. First one since the beginning of the half when they were up 33-31. Pierce. Kwachik, decent D, but Pierce is good. Tough shot. Help even got an extra hand in there. Five now for Caden Pierce. Fleming steps in. That pinball is off of Davis's hands. Shot clock back to 20. And did Brown step on the sideline? Yeah, he's done that now on either side. 
so frustrating. And the thing that's hard to understand as a coach is they drill on corner threes. They drill on corner reps every day. So you would think the footwork would be automatic and you would avoid that because it is something that players at this level have thousands of reps on. You just have to officiate it in drill work, make them aware. Second turnover for Brown, fourth one for St. Joe's. Going back to Pierce again. This time they get the double. Fleming got some hands in there. Lee back in with the three personals and threw it right into the arms of Xavier Brown. Xavier's reco Brown's recovery speed is amazing. Brown steps into the triple. And Peters grabs the board. Princeton winning the glass, but barely 23-21, up by one on the scoreboard. As advertised between these two, Alaco got that block. That's a third one for Fleming. And at this end, a little too much. The pass was good. He just didn't have his steps down. But it's amazing when you see a 6'9 guy routinely block jump shots. Great shot blockers. They'll block shots at the rim. But blocking shots on threes, that is like pterodactyl length. Unbelievable closeout speed. I like how you went prehistoric there. It, it, you don't see it in modern times very often. Maybe that's why. And yeah, Rashir Fleming coming in, one of the best block percentages in the country inside the top 60. And that's they measure that on two-point field goals. Has blocked a couple threes today. St. Joe's recovery speed is outstanding. Scott with the air ball. Martini the save. Wow. And Lee corralled it. Five Great on the save. shot clock. Lee going to have to bail it out. Desperation and hit nothing. That's a shot clock violation. St. Joe's defensive schemes are really good, but what's outstanding is their foot speed, their ability to help and recover. They could be in the lane, take away a two, and recover back out to a shooter as well as any team I've seen this year. Yeah, there's a reason that their defensive numbers where they are a top 50 defense in the country in terms of efficiency coming in Greer inside 10 to shoot got the spin on Scott off the window big time post play by Greer love posting the guards pendulum swings back towards St. Joe's but Martini steps in and back to pe up to Princeton. <laughs> it's threes against twos. Eight now for Zach Martini. And here's the zone, and the key again is Pierce at the top. Look at how much St. Joe's has to lob the ball over the head of Pierce. Reynolds in rhythm. Love it. Attack the 1-3-1 one, one towards the baseline. Not back and forth, sideline to sideline, lobbing it over Pierce. Those guards on the wing are smaller. Get it to the baseline where you can get a three. Pierce wanted Martini, threw it away. St. Joe's aware of the backdoor cut, covering it, forcing the turnover. Building is about to bust here at Hagen Arena. St. Joe's by one. Come back with us. Special kid. Kotsper Kwachik, Sean Simmons, Reynolds, Lynn Greer, and Xavier Brown for St. Joe's. Simmons with a flash, the up fake right to the basket, trying to drop the hammer. Lee. And now Alaco, they'll get into their set. That's the seven foot five wingspan for Sean Simmons. Just couldn't finish. This is the dunk, but he defended that pick and roll well. And excellent defense by Reynolds. We're praising his offense well. That defense deserves some praise right there, forcing the miss against Lee. Student section that's almost packed to the gills. 54th Airborne letting them know. Jack Scott, Caden Pierce, Xavier Lee, Matalaco, and Martini for Princeton. Reynolds, Curl. Simmons tracked down the offensive rebound. Simmons didn't make that dunk, but he's helping on pick and rolls, getting second shots, contributing. Greer got the baseline, the layup, and one. Oh, 
Look at this spin move. Love guards in the post. He feels the defense's body and leg whips. Might have hooked on that. Coach Henderson <laughs> will, will not like that a whole bunch. But I love inverting your offense. Have your gu big guys outside of shooters, post a big, strong guard. It's really hard to defend. Greer now with 15. He's one for two today from the stripe. I've said uh, a bunch this year. He is St. Joe's X Factor in terms of the Hawks' success in March. Guards the other team's best player. There you see him on Lee right there. Excellent assist to turnover ratio. He'll make his threes. He'll run the point. I think you're right. You have most valuable and most important. And Greer may be most important because of the defensive piece and all his offensive responsibilities. You get a foul here on Kwachik. So second team foul. So the reason he got that foul is St. Joe's is trying to pressure Pierce. Since he has the ball so much, pressuring him right there, forcing him to handle the ball further out and pass under duress affects the Tigers. Lee Simmons rotated, got the block. Xavier Brown right to the basket, score it, plus one. of Simmons one fantastic freshman and another fantastic freshman with unmatched quickness getting the old school and one this Hawks team is a perfect blend of veteran players like Cam Brown and and uh, Reynolds along with this super exciting freshman class we just saw the talent of Xavier Brown and Simmons and gets the three-point play or Simmons' athleticism is everything people told us about. Largest lead of the afternoon for St. Joe's. There, look at the de denial of Pierce. Forcing, that's really bothering the Princeton offense. Look, Pierce is almost at half court, and now he's got to pass under the duress. Peters, Davis, big shot. Damon freshman, Davis. Freshman that they are analytically. Interesting, 22, the freshman Davis. The coaching staff speaks about him much the way they talked about uh, Lee last year. They really think he's dynamic. Yeah, Post big, it up. Big time potential. Greer over the front of the rim. Just get out of his way. It, it's just ridiculous. Greer's post game is at the highest level right now. Wow. And these are physically strong Princeton defenders that he is just backing down. He is winning the position battle, getting the ball outside the lane, and inching his way to the rim for the high percentage shots. How about this stat line for him today? 18 points, 4 rebounds, 3 assists, 3 steals, no turnovers. Doing winning things. Astounding. And maybe the zero turnovers most impressive of all. And St. Joe's only 5 of them as a team. Davis going to give Greer a taste of his own medicine, this time off the bounce. Once again, this time last year, only the Princeton coaches knew how good Lee is. Right now, people don't know a lot about Davis. The Princeton coaches are saying Davis is the next dynamic one. And Whitney M. Young High School in Chicago was their first ever four-year starter, which says a lot if you know anything about that program. Produced Jaleel Okafor, Quentin Richardson, a lot of good ones. All lost out of bounds here. We'll stay at this end. Nine on the shot clock. St. Joe's going for what's the fifth straight in the series, fifth straight overall. And perhaps what you could call the biggest home game of the Billy Lang era. Already a signature win over Villanova, who uh, looked pretty good last night against uh, a top five scoring defense in the country in UCLA. What, one play away from winning at Kentucky, and the St. Joe's team would be nationally ranked. Brown. Excellent find, Klotchik, open and cashes in! Six three of the basketball game for St. Joe's, first one for Klotchik. Lead is back to their largest. Alaco, probing. 
student section trying to add to the decibel level, and Davis goes right over the top of Reynolds. High-level basketball game. And timeout on the floor. Guard played to, to what Coach Jones has done up in New Haven. Well, well the different Yale had a bunch of people coming back, and Princeton lost three starters. Brown right off the window continues to be on cue in terms of freshmen. Xavier Brown has a different level of quickness. Ten now for him. Sixth career double-figure game. In a career that's only nine and a half games old. Alaco stepped in, buries it. Hey, these are good basketball teams. And they understand where the open person is, how to get the ball from one side to another. The big guys are versatile. They can all make threes and pass. They could all switch. And there we see it again. Simmons, one more. Kwachik with the hop. Somebody's open. It's Reynolds for three. And Lee down with the rebound. Chance to tie potentially for the Tigers. Alaco. Better help on him. And good strip. Tied up. If that arrow will go to St. Joe's. Alaco scores down here. And Reynolds knows that scouting report and rakes down on the ball and likely saves the Hawks from absorbing two more points from Princeton. Really good minutes this afternoon for St. Joe's for Sean Simmons. Tremendous minutes. Just a couple of rebounds and a block, but some really good closeouts. Uh, exactly. Kwachik got stripped. With Davis really locking down on Reynolds. And he just switched pivot feet. Can't do that. But credit, that play was designed for Reynolds, and Davis, the freshman, blew it up. And what guts and confidence by Coach Henderson telling his freshman, hey, why don't you go guard that potential pro out there, that, that senior that's setting all those records, and Davis comes through. Lee nearly traveled. Here's Davis. And he got stripped. Cam Brown. Reynolds. Wow, Pierce cutting off Reynolds at 6'7". Yeah, you want to talk about an athlete. And Reynolds lost the handle on that, got deflected. Pierce, Pierce, oh. And I don't think Pierce thinks he taught. I don't know no. that he did. I don't think he did. Yeah, I have I'm, a feeling. I don't think he did. I have a feeling when we look at this, it's going to end up being Princeton's ball. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and I think that... You know, that's the right call. Yeah, it was. He gets it caught. Yep. There's the defense by Pierce. And just, and just, just loses lost it. the ball. Yep. And what happened is he saw the defense rotating. It was going to be intercepted, and he tried to pull it back at the last second. Lee missed the left hand, but there's Pierce. Princeton to within one. Pierce, top ten rebounder in the country. Relentless pursuit of the ball with leaping ability and strength. Seven for the younger brother of Indianapolis Colts. Wide out Alec Pierce. Spin cycle. Kwachik and couldn't finish. Princeton's last lead at 11.53. 47.45. A pair of ties. Ten lead changes. What we've been treated to today. And it has been a treat. And here's the matchup. End of the... Alaco for the lead. Nope. And Greer grabs the rebound, his fifth of the afternoon. And right to the basket on Lee. He goes. Watch it crashing in. Touch that last. Oh, no. There's a foul on the floor. Another rejection. Watch the screens left, but he goes right. Hard drive. Just a scrum for the rebound. Greer so good at going opposite the screen. Oh, by the way, that was on Pierce. That was his fourth personal. There were so many bodies flying around on that offensive-defensive rebounding situation. You'd 
you didn't really see the contact that they called. Free throws huge here, obviously. Uh, Caden Pierce not getting to make the impact on this game. I think he would have liked. And Kwachek not a great free throw shooter at 46%. St. Joe's is the team, five for seven. And banked it. As an opposing coach, that makes you crazy. Well, you and I aren't stranger to bank shots in the last eight days anyway. <laughs> well, we saw it was the cells, right? Khalil Brantley. Yeah, from half court. It's one thing to bank in a half. You're not supposed to bank, <laughs> bank free, free throws. Throw. Hey. Still count just the same. This time, Blachik gets the second, second a little easier. Perfect. A little luck and a little skill. And what an afternoon he's had. Matches a career high with nine. Sits down in favor of Rashir Fleming. Inside five minutes, alongside the former LaSalle head coach, Dr. John Giannini, Matt Martucci. Davis uh, off the dribble. That's just ridiculous. That's a really tough contested shot. Back-to-back -back double figure games now for the freshman. Has 10 points all in the second half. And we get Fleming moving here. Davis forces an illegal screen, doing it defensively. And here's the off. Listen, there's nothing wrong with that defense. Hand in the face, tough two. Davis's minutes are going to skyrocket into Ivy League play. There's no question. He's just taking it to a different level. Peters with a tough catch. Lee, good close there by Greer. Freshman matchup. Love it. Davis and Brown. Davis hits it. Wow. First Princeton lead since the 11.53 mark. And he hasn't missed a shot. And they're tough ones. And it's a big moment. Two games. Davis is exploding onto the scene. Comes from a basketball family. Brother Devin played at Creighton. And he's the first Whitney Young kid from Chicago to commit to an Ivy League school. And Mitch Henderson and his staff, I'm sure, glad to have him. Xavier Brown, Hawks glad to have him. Fleming cleaning it up. And tied for only the third time. So Princeton switched. And they had the six-foot Davis on Fleming. It didn't hurt in the form of a post-up, but then Fleming hurts him on the glass. Three ties, 11 lead changes. Xavier Brown nearly grabbed that. Princeton a 61% second half. St. Joe's at under 41 this second. Alaco, tough turnaround. Bodies flying everywhere. Arrow going to stay at this end if that's a tie-up. And it is. Terrific defense by Reynolds, though. Alaco is a really, really good player, and Reynolds just forced him into a super tough shot. So Princeton switches. And right there you see Fleming, perfect position with the smaller Davis on him. With the big basket to tie the game. Now switching doesn't always hurt you immediately. It could hurt you later on the glass. A little bit of length, a lot of quickness. What has helped St. Joe's today. And Princeton, it's been the outside shooting. 15 made threes for the Tigers. They came in averaging nine. Down to a three-minute basketball game. Pierce, good D by Fleming. Finds Martini. Lee off the bounce and hits it. Nothing wrong with that defense. Insane shot from deep and contested. Way beyond the college arc. 18 for Xavier Lee. Brown off the bounce. Backdoor cut. Got it back. And right to the basket. Shot Un clock inside 15. Unbelievable body control to not fall on that. He was off balance. Greer going to start it up again. Getting toward bailout time. Cam Brown with good D from Martini. Hits the three. Are you kidding me?
That's a treat. Inside two minutes. Decibel level bumping up. And Brent Hampton says foul on Greer. Only the fourth team foul on St. Joe's. But I guess they're going to say, was he good defense and players rising up to the occasion. Lee from NBA range with the hand in the face. And then Brown at the end of the shot clock, fading away. I guess they're saying Lee was in the act. So a pair of shots coming for an almost 87% free throw shooter. And right up into that student section, 87% means a little less. Super competitive, players rising up, strong defenses, guys making plays, could watch this all day. Lee missed them both. Those were Princeton's first two free throw attempts of the afternoon. Handoff coming for Reynolds. Got some separation. Reynolds against Lee. What a matchup. Now it's Pierce. Reynolds just so quick. Pierce is out of this game. And that's huge because one of the reasons Princeton is undefeated is Pierce getting offensive rebounds late in the game. Watch the hesitation. Put his head back right there. And the threat of that three is what got Pierce out of his stance. And as I said, Pierce at the end of close games for Princeton. Reynolds one for one, make it two for two on the afternoon. Yeah, he's... Of any player you want up there, you want the 85% veteran free throw shooter. Got them both. 12th lead change to go with four ties. It's electric in here. Lee, Martini, Davis. Ran into Fleming and still got that on the rim. A foul on St. Joe's. Four guard lineup for Princeton is hard to guard. And we've seen Davis just take control of this game. And that call could probably go either way. Davis four for four on the season. Not anymore. St. Joe's student section coming through. Missed them both. Boy, 0 for 4 for Princeton from the line late here. As I said, that student section's a factor. With two of their best free throw shooters. Xavier Brown separating from Martini. Uh, got stripped, but a uh, late foul. And if that's Lee, that's his fourth. It's either Lee or Peters. And I really haven't seen Coach Henderson get upset once this year. And I've it's seen Peters. all the games. He was upset about that call. Well, and uh, gee, I think that tells you how much this means. Oh, right? it does. It means so much. Every game means a lot, but this one... This one in particular. Is, this one is a little bit more. And Brown missed the front end. Inside of a minute to go. Xavier Lee, who's been so good this afternoon for Princeton. 18 points, 9 rebounds at the controls. Peters couldn't convert. Xavier Brown, the rebound. Coach Lane getting the play he wants. 15-second differential shot in game clock. He the biggest home game in the Billy Lang era. Reynolds leaning in and out. 
Rebound spins around. Bodies crashing everywhere. Cam Brown got it out. And they foul Reynolds. Mr. Dependable with one of the biggest intangible plays. Not going to see it in the stat sheet. You nailed it, Matt. At the end of the year, if you hear your name called as a coach, you think back to moments and plays just like what Cam Brown just did. And you used the word, the greatest ability, dependability. And Brown has done it for years here. Wow, that was a tough, hard-nosed play. First of two. 18 for Reynolds. Sharing a game high with Lynn Greer and then Princeton Xavier Lee. And got them both. Billy Lang going a little offense defense with the big thing is now not fouling. 11 seconds left. Lee right to the basket and well there's the foul. 7.5 to go. Yeah. Scoring with the clock stopped is 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 the toughest thing for St. Joe's right now. Yeah, Brown right here. This could be one of the plays. If the Hawks hang on, this could be one of the plays of the year. In traffic, scrapping. But right now, because of that foul, St. Joe's is going to have to break a press, not turn it over, and make some free throws to ice this game. Princeton 0 for 4. And Lee, cool customer this time. Jack Scott back in for Princeton. Rashir Fleming back in as Simmons sits down. So I would assume it's Greer, but the most important player now is your inbounder. Your inbounder has to get the ball in without a turnover. Lee gets both. Xavier Brown will take that. You need a point guard. You need a good decision maker. This pass may be the most important pass of the game. And wings it to Cam Brown. And they just tied it up. Arrow will stay with St. Joe's. And honestly, that's not a terrible trade off. Unfortunately, yeah, the arrow, you got a couple seconds off the clock. Yep. That was it. It goes long. And they foul Reynolds immediately. Half a second goes off so the clock. Really, I'm surprised Princeton allowed the inbounds and allowed it to Reynolds. But the reason they did it, they wanted to foul quick and give themselves a chance to get the ball back with as much time as possible. But again, St. Joseph, I'm sure, pleased that Reynolds was the one to catch it and get sent to the line. Every part of the 10 on that free throw. So if he should miss this, if he makes it, St. Joe's is going to win. If he misses it, we'll see if Coach Lang elects to foul. I would. You see people make threes at the buzzer every night. You don't see people make the free throw, get the rebound. But it's a new point right now for the Hawks. So once again, don't foul. Put your whole defense back. St. Joe's by four. Lee to finish this out. And off target. St. Joe's 